That concludes our discussion on item four. Our next item for discussion is item six, the ironclad. And since I believe we only have one speaker for that item, maybe you could come to the microphone and, and if, if you had a question or a minor issue, maybe you could ask that so we don't ask staff to give a, a full formal presentation on the whole project. <laughs> Maybe we have a couple speakers. No, first of all, uh, my name is Randy Manthe. I live at 100 Third Avenue South. I'm here representing the Downtown Minneapolis Neighborhood Association Land Use Committee. And I would like to express my thanks to the commission and to the applicant and the team for uh, hanging around. This could have been cleaned up very simply through consent, but I just like to discuss one item. There is no need to do a full formal presentation of the project. I'd like to just address a couple of really quick items. First of all, uh, this is a great project. We had an opportunity to review this project at the uh, DMM, DMNA land use meeting on May the 3rd. So the applicant came in with their team, did a full presentation of the project. We had a very good discussion. We identified four particular items that we asked the developer to look at as they proceeded to further refine the project. Those items were the blank south wall on the parking garage, which has been addressed and is a part of the staff report. Um, the second item is the width of the curb cut off of Chicago Avenue that also was addressed and uh, resolved to the satisfaction of the DMNA. The next item is the developer should maximize every opportunity to integrate trees and other greenery into the public realm. If you look at the planting plan and the design of this project, they've gone above and beyond uh, to create a public edge as well as a very unique back. Are we calling it an alley or have you come up with a new name for it? Walkway through which uh, the neighborhood can uh, navigate to and from Mill District over to the stadium. So again, offering up a little delightful opportunity uh, as far as uh, integrating into the um, strange geometries and uh, uh, elevations, great elevations on this property. The one item I would like to address in particular, and I've talked to the applicant about this, uh, and I've sent a, a note into the city today, it's something I'd like to address on a broader level, but apply to this specific project, and that is uh, the issue of dog relief on facilities. Uh, with all the issues in the world, you may think of dog relief as a rather trite uh, um, discussion item, but when you think about the number of units that are now being built in the downtown area, you have the legacy with 300 plus units, you have 205 Park with 127 units, Ironclad with 171 <laughs> units, you have East Town, you have some other projects coming forward. Uh, and generally, and I'll be somewhat conservative in my, my numbers here, um, usually get about 25, 30% of the, the units are occupied with owners who have dogs. So, you know, we're dumping two, 300 dogs out onto the streets with all this, this new development in the downtown area. And what we're asking right now, I know the city has nothing on their books, nothing in your zoning regulations that addresses this item. This is an item that's real. Other cities are challenged by this. Um, going forward, I would very much appreciate it if this board commission um, could look at that, if the planning staff could look at that as, a, as an opportunity. And uh, so when a, a development is built, that facility is integrated into the new development. A beautiful example, a well done example is the addition. They have a little outdoor dog area as well as an indoor facility. It becomes a tremendous marketing opportunity for the project. It brings value to the community in that the dogs and many times their needs are addressed you know, on the facility without having to take them across the street and inevitably they end up relieving themselves on other people's property who are trying to maintain their grass and shrubs and such. Uh, the DMNA truly supports dogs. We value dogs in the downtown area. They bring tremendous value to the owners. They are a way to uh, uh, promote sense of community and also they put eyes on the street when people are walking their dogs. So it's a very positive thing. It's just this one thing needs to get addressed. And the only way this can be addressed 
is in the physical development of projects on properties. This isn't something you can many times go and do as an after the fact item. Um, so what I would like to do is just ask the applicant, and I've discussed this with them in advance, if they could just please explain how they're handling it on this project and as a way to ensure that this gets done and it gets done well, that the commission condition the project on providing an on-site relief facility that is designed specifically for this purpose and not taking the end of a flower bed and calling it a dog relief area. Uh, thank you. Oh, thank you. And I know we have at least one other uh, speaker, but why, why don't we have uh, the staff presentation uh, right now? All right, I just have a really brief presentation. The applications before you tonight for uh, this proposal include a conditional use permit, variance, and site plan review. Uh, the location of the property is at Washington and Chicago. It includes several different parcels. Uh, the parcel or the property has a unique shape because of the former location of the railroad. Uh, I have some historic photos to show because we are including a condition of approval related to the retaining wall. Um, so I have some historic photos uh, where you can see the viaduct that used to cross. Um, at Washington and Chicago, the arrows uh, note where the property is. Sorry, that one is turned the wrong way. Um, here's probably the best photo. You can see um, the retaining wall that's still on site, or a portion of it is still on site, um, is right here. Can you see that cursor? Um, the proposal, as I said, conditional use permit to increase maximum height. There's a residential portion of the building that exceeds the maximum height. It's 14 stories. Um, where the district maximum is 10 stories. There's a hotel portion that faces Chicago Avenue, which is only eight stories, so that uh, complies with the height requirement. It's just that residential portion. And then they have a second phase that's proposed along 9th Avenue, which would um, add four additional stories on top of the parking garage, which is to the rear of the property. And includes two levels of underground parking and two levels of above grade parking. There's a variance of the northeast interior side yards. That's just for the residential windows that are located um, along this section of the building, and they extend out to four feet from the property line where 15 feet is required, and then site plan review for the overall site. Um, we are recommending approval with several conditions. Um, we had not addressed the uh, dog relief issue in our staff report, um, so that it's not a zoning code requirement, so it's not something we would typically evaluate during the site plan review process, and I can take any questions. All right, thank you. Are there any questions of staff? Uh, if there are none, I'll open the public hearing on this item, and I'd like to ask the applicant to speak at this time, and please state your name and address for the record. Uh, good evening, members of the commission. My name is Pete Keeley with Collage Architects. I'm here representing the Carbonda family. Uh, Varun Carbonda is also here tonight, and the uh, Graves Hospitality, Jim and Ben Graves are here as well to answer questions if you have them. Um, so we're really pleased with the project and kind of the direction it's going and working with the neighborhood group to kind of provide a, um, a kind of a uh, um, redevelopment for what was a parking lot and try to incorporate some of the historical elements, um, including the name. Uh, Ironclad actually was the name of the old grain elevator that was on the site and incorporating some of those walls and some of the stone uh, to try to make it um, you know, a little piece of history there. We know that the uh, dogs are a big issue and actually my numbers would probably be a little higher than the 25 to 30% on dog ownership. So it's a big concern to us because those are our future residents and the future market that we do have. So we're really trying to provide amenities that are akin to the market of which bikes are a big one, dogs are a big one, and to granite and all those types of things as well. So uh, we do have, um, on the plans that you have, there are there is a dog room shown on the upper floor, uh, the dog room with the idea that that happens on the third level patio. Uh, so that was originally proposed. There are some concerns about how phase two happens and where dog run happens within that, and also the idea that as dogs are out walking, you're coming in and out of a lower level floor. They actually may not get to the dog run. We are incorporating a dog uh, spa, uh, washing, foot washing on the lower level uh, at the kind of north east corner where the walkway is. So we are going to be incorporating kind of a dog relief area of some sort along the walkway. That has yet to be designed. Um, that is something that is going to go in place, but we're also trying to coordinate um, landscaping and generators or um, transformers and whatnot. So we've got a lot of moving parts in there, but the intent is to actually put that in that kind of walkway location 
And then there's also some discussion about the future. They also own the property to the east um, of that as well, which is also a parking lot and the redevelopment of uh, Ninth Avenue. So that within that, we're looking at maybe kind of a phased approach to kind of figure out where the dog relief is. But it's certainly a big concern of us and will be provided in the project. All right. And with that, I think I would just open up to any, any questions. And commissioners, are there any questions of the applicant? Uh, if there are none, we can move on to some other speakers, and I think we have a couple people who would like to speak. Please come to the microphone and state your name and address for the record. Um, good evening. Uh, let's see. I did not intend to speak today, so this is something that is very impromptu for me. I thought that the format today was going to be a little different than what I see. And please, please My name, your name is and uh, Delma Bartlemy. I'm a resident of the Zenith condominiums and recent to the city of Minneapolis. Um, however, Minneapolis has, uh, Minnesota has been a place that I have come to since uh, a long time ago. 45 years of marriage has always meant that every summer we go to the cabin. I am an urban person at heart and grew up in Chicago. And so my comments are aimed, um, and my questions are aimed at um, those of us who, who love uh, being urban animals, um, and also uh, the Mississippi River. Okay, um, first of all, I think I'd like to draw your attention to the fact that I wore sneakers today. Uh, one of the ways that I, got, that I get around is by walking. Um, certainly, uh, you live in the city because you want to get rid of a car. And certainly Minneapolis has really impressed me with its planning and its um, ability to have people live here and to be able to get around uh, and, and lower our carbon footprints. Um, there is public transportation on Washington. There's the train accessibility to shopping areas. Uh, and certainly entertainment is uh, very easily gotten to by, by foot traffic. It's, it's a wonderful place that I have chosen to live in. And so my comments are a little bit wider than this particular project scope that you're addressing at this moment. I had a chance to chat with Pete, and uh, he has explained to me some of the walkability items that are incorporated into the project along 9th Avenue. My main um, voice today for all of you, um, ladies and gentlemen, is that Washington is truly deplorable when it comes to foot traffic. I can't walk side by side with my husband currently. Um, there are, uh, it's not wide enough for two people to walk side by side in many areas between uh, Chicago, Portland, 9th Avenue, 10th Avenue, because there have been uh, additions of meters for uh, marking parking spots. Um, there, there are dubious uh, areas that are designated for trees that really aren't serving their purpose now since the trees have died. Um, so it's difficult for a couple with children, for example, to be able to walk with a stroller. It's also difficult to maintain. Um, there are many people who I have seen walking, falling, because it's difficult to clear snow, ice, et cetera, from that area. And I'm referring to, again, between the 10th Avenue and getting closer to the Renaissance Depot area. Um, the, the reason why I'm speaking to this um, lack of being able to, to walk or lowering the walkability index is also because you have some other projects that are scheduled to be erected along this neighborhood of ours. Um, so please consider that in your uh, reviews. Uh, I think at this particular meeting, you're taking a look more or less at the particular tree as opposed to the forest. I don't know why, you know, there isn't a, there, there isn't, perhaps I'm not aware of a, a venue where you take a look at the whole, uh, projects, um, more than one project and its effect on the neighborhood. Perhaps this organization, the DMNA, is, is one of the, the resources that we have. 
Um, the second point I would like to mention, uh, I, I want to draw your attention to, um, is my voice about the skyline, and it refers to the exception on height, the restriction on. There is, you have a height limitation, and uh, there, I noticed that there are, there's a constant review for, uh, for bending that rule. Why do you have that if you're going to be continuously asking for hearings, et cetera, that that height limit is not being met in one way or another? Skyline is something that perhaps needs to be considered on a more holistic approach. You have some beautiful features in your skyline. Um, in particular, I'd like to draw your attention to the clock in this, in this building. But with the height, you are losing that feature, which in my opinion, and historically speaking, is key to your city. Uh, please consider that also as you review your, your planning and your approval of the different projects. What is going to be the focus of your skyline? How, how do you want it hidden? How do you want it to showcase your city, our city, uh, as, as time goes by and as there's a need for uh, finding exceptions and approvals to exceptions on your height? Um, OK, uh, let's see. Thank you. I think that those are the points that I wanted to make. All today. right. Thank you. And I think we have one other speaker. And please state your name and address for the record. Hi. Good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for the opportunity to speak. I also, my name is Anthony Foster, a resident of the Zenith condominiums, uh, right on Second Street, 901 Second Street. We're well within the 350 feet uh, limit of the proposed ironclad property. I've been a taxpaying resident of the Zenith now since October 2013. We looked at the, the property for a considerable amount of time uh, before we decided to buy and we're assured, although we noticed there was quite a bit of undeveloped lots, uh, parking, et cetera, or surrounding a building, that there was a height restriction along the uh, Washington Avenue corridor, which would limit the amount of uh, tall buildings would go in within our sight, sight lines. Uh, the city has spent a good bit of time in the redevelopment project of the Washington Avenue. Right away, it's been painfully <laughs> wet. One, one thing we've worked around for the last year and will continue, I think it's going to be a good addition to the, prop, the east, the downtown east area. However, I think if we start building uh, allowing a variance for the height, maybe only in this case a very small variance, but the next time uh, around somebody's going to increase that a little more, we'll have the concrete canyon, you know, glass concrete canyon to negotiate every time we go up and down Washington Avenue. I think it would be a detriment to the uh, overall downtown east uh, uh, scene and uh, for the residents therein. And the next thing you know, uh, somebody might uh, throw up a 51-story Trump Tower uh, a couple blocks away. I, uh, otherwise, I welcome the project. It looks like a beautiful plan. I think it'll be a, an, an addition, a welcome addition with a retail space. I'd just like to see the, the restriction on height uh, maintained here and in the future projects that might be uh, developed along the Washington Avenue. Thank you. All right, thank you. And is there anyone else who would like to speak on this item? Seeing no one, I will close the public hearing. And commissioners, we have three applications before us. Are there any further questions of staff, or would someone like to start us off with a motion? Does anyone like to start us off with a motion? Commissioner Kronzer. I will move staff recommendation. Sorry about that. Um, item A, conditional use permit with a one stated condition. All right, we have a motion and a second to approve item A, the conditional use permit for height. Is there any further discussion? 
Uh, Commissioner Rockwell. I think just uh, because two of our commenters talked about the height, the, the height, um, it, the conditional use permit to increase height is is essentially the city's burden to show that there is some significant harm to deny it. So um, I think that both of your comments were were heard, and um, uh, but we don't have actually a lot of power to to keep height down. I do think um, if uh, for one of our speakers. Uh, you're curious about sort of the process for the holistic thinking. There are discussions right now around the comprehensive plan, which is a 10-year planning document. So, um, and that will be continuing in the next year. So that's a way to get involved in that, that thinking. All right, thank you. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, clerk, please call the roll. Bender? Aye. Kronzer? Aye. Lipke Pierre? Aye. Magrino? Aye. Rockwell? Aye. Slack? Aye. Sweezy? Aye. Freeland? Aye. Eight zero. All right, and that motion carries. Next we have items B and C. Commissioners, Commissioner Kronzer. Sure, I'll, I'll move B and C together. Um, a motion to approve staff recommendation to approve the variance um, from the 15 feet to four feet for the windows <coughs> yard setback. And also see site plan review with the six stated conditions. All right, we have a motion and a second to approve items B and C. Is there any further discussion? Uh, Commissioner Magrino. Uh, I'll just say about the pet issue. Uh, I live in Loring Park, so also pretty much downtown. And Kitty Corner from my apartment building is Emerson School, and they've got a decent amount of grass kind of right there on uh, Spruce and 15th. And they have had so much dog poop in the on the grounds of the school that the kids at the school have put up like tens of signs. They're all hand drawn with like crying emoji poops, begging people to not let their dogs poop on the grass. So I would agree that it is kind of an issue because a lot of people do have dogs downtown. And I think we maybe give points in a planned unit development for a pet relief area, but it's not something that's currently. Uh, part of our zoning review, so that is maybe something that we could look at um, as we are updating our zoning code with the comprehensive plan because it is a concern. But it sounds like they did um, have some facilities in the building for for pets. So just wanted to throw out that general comment. Thank you, and Commissioner Vreeland. Suggest a poop dedication fee. Poop dedication <laughs> fee. That could work. All right. And uh, if there is no further discussion, we have a motion and a second to approve items B and C. Clerk, please call the roll. Freeland? Aye. Sweezy? Aye. Slack? Aye. Rockwell? Aye. Magrino? Aye. Lipke Pier? Aye. Kronzer? Aye. Bender? Aye. Eight zero. All right, and that motion carries. That concludes our discussion on item six. I should also mention.